Hello, this is Lynn Hirschberger, Lynn H. from ColorJoy.com. We're continuing our series of videos to teach the unique parts of the crystal socklet from Nitty.com, which came out in March of 2012. This is how far we are in the pattern at this point. Uh, I'm just going to teach a little, a, a few tips and tricks on how to finish a, a bind off and uh, how to make sure the bind off is stretchy enough so that it will actually go over your heel when you go to put on your sock. So I have d d already done the, the bind off all except for the sewing in on this sock which has been my sample. It is in larger yarn than the actual pattern specifies so that you can see the colors a little bit better. So it is sort of uh, not exactly what you're going to see on your needles. However, today I want to show you how the bind off goes and I actually used a different color for the last round for the bind off here so that you could see a little bit of what I'm doing. So what I've got right now is I've just got a few more stitches left to bind off and it says bind off pearl wise which just means you actually make a pearl and once you've made the pearl, then you lift over that stitch. So it's a bind off, you lift over stitches, but you're going to do it after making a pearl instead of after making it a knit. And that allows for one more round of what looks like garter. Do you see that here we had two ridges? Let's see, you can see two ridges of what looked like garter. And over here, once I've finished the bind off, that last row actually has this little you can see the colors mix and that makes it look like a third round of garter which is very nice uh, just a decorative feature and I have a split stitch here my friends let's see there we go what I want you to know about binding off is that it's, it's always rigid and sometimes that's kind of a good thing it's nice to have a bind off at the top of a sweater uh, on your shoulders that keeps it from stretching out when you're wearing it but in this case we want it to stretch so that it will go over that largest part of your foot which is that heel diagonal measurement and so we want to be really aware of how much space we're allowing it to stretch when we make it notice that I've got one stitch right here and now we're going to make that second stitch which is a purl Take a look at this and see that I've, I've pulled this a little bit bigger than the actual needle size and I am using a larger size needle as a, as a bind off because this height is very, very important. Once I lift this stitch over this stitch, that yarn goes horizontally and it kind of chokes the bottom of that next stitch. So if I lift this over now and I put it right there, that's as far as that stitch can stretch. Now, in fact, I am using a yarn with some elastic in it. This is cotton and elastic yarn, but and wool does have some stretch too. But you want to be really careful about this because if you don't make it tall enough before you uh, lay it over, it won't stretch enough. So again, we're going to make a stitch. And what I did was I used a larger needle. You can see this one's a smaller one and this one's a larger one. And I even sort of bring them up a little bit so there's some air space there. That makes that a little taller. And then when I lift it over, it can stretch a bigger distance. Some people use a, a single crochet bind off. It does look different and it would change how this, uh, this edging looked, but it is a little bit stretchier. So if you know how to crochet, you can just crochet into that stitch off of the needle and do a single crochet to finish off and that gives it a little more stretch too. But here I am now on the very last stitch <clears throat> and I'm going to put this needle down. At this point, there is a little bit of confusion as to what might be the best idea for, for finishing it off. I'm going to cut this yarn and I'm going to give myself plenty of sewing space. So I'm going to cut it there and I, I tend to like to use a diagonal line when I cut my yarn so that if something does stick out to the other side it's just a little tiny point it's not a big uh, crew cut as Sarah Peasley might say. What we've got here now is what a lot of people would do is this last 
stitch now they would take this end and put it through that if you do that though what you end up with is this extra stitch that that hangs off the edge and it kind of sometimes they call that a dog ear where something sticks out past the edge of the actual knitting we've got this little thing sticking out so that's not how I do it and I know uh, Lucy Neatby does it this other way and I think I've I think I learned it from her uh, and I know Kat Bordy has a, a video that shows this also. But so here's my last stitch. This is the very last stitch. Instead of taking this end and putting it through that, I'm actually going to let go of the yarn and I'm going to pull on the needle that has a loop on it until that loop comes out and that end Actually, it's it's like you put the yarn end through this last stitch rather than the stitch um, you you decreased by a stitch. And now what you've got is a, a bind off that has no dog ear. It's straight and beautiful, and you can just see that it's really clean and it won't fall over. However, now what we've got is the it, eternal problem of crochet or I'm sorry of knitting in the round and when we knit in the round we are really making a spiral it's like a slinky toy and so we were down here on this level and when we come back around we're actually one story higher in, in building terms and so they aren't exactly even this guy's a little higher up but we would like to fake the eye out so that it looks like it's pretty even that's just going to make it look better so I'm going to get myself in this case I've got big fat yarn so I'm using a larger needle when you're doing your fingering weight it's it's good to get a smaller needle now here's a trick for how to get your yarn through that hole without having to lick it and lick it and lick it and, and have frustrations if you fold over the yarn over your needle almost like if you think about it as a piece of paper where you're folding it hard so that there's no air in it once we do that you can hardly see that pink just barely see the pink and I'm going to pull the needle out now, I'm right-handed so this is how I do it with right hand um, but even right-handers sometimes use a different needle so see what works for you now I have a, a little tiny fold of fabric with no air in it and I can push that through the hole and so on the very first time I tried this is a really big hole but I can do this with yarn that looks like it can't fit through certain holes because we're pulling all of the air out and we can push that crease through there so now that I've done that we're going to do our next little trick and again I've, I've got this extra end here because I started my new yarn uh, just for the last round what I've got here is if you can see here's a V and here's another V inside of it, and here's another V inside of it. So each V has a V inside of it with this bind off. Well, then we've got this one end sticking out that doesn't have a V coming back, but we want to make it go around this. This guy does, isn't inside of any stitch. So we're going to make a fake stitch by sewing so that we can join these two together and make it look more invisible. So what we're going to do here is take this yarn it comes up and out and then we're going to find the V here and go under it straight underneath that yarn so that we're making it fit now in the in the middle of a new stitch can you see that what, what we're trying to do here and we're going to bring it down so that it's about the right size and then we will put this needle in that hole again to finish the V we're gonna finish that V I'm trying not to stab into my fabric my blue fabric here and so now what I've got is a pretty decent facsimile of another stitch and if I cover this up you can see it a little bit but it's not too bad and it looks a lot more like there isn't a stair step right there we've got a nice smooth edge it is a little bit funky right here but that's okay we can make that uh, nobody's going to be that close to your sock I bet if anyone's down on their knees looking at your sock and telling you that it's uneven, I think that they need to go make their own socks, perhaps. That's my thought. So, this is the finish of that. I'm, I can do the same thing with my, uh, with my actual sock. And so again, this is the last stitch I made. I can put my yarn through 
I don't know if that's the right side, but that's okay. And then I'm going to cut this yarn. Let's see where camera's off a little bit. And we'll pull that right out from the hole. You just pull the needle and it comes out and it basically ties a knot. This is a little bit harder to see. The yarn is smaller and we don't have a contrasting color. I'm sort of pulling this out so that it has a better size. Again, I'm going to fold my end of my yarn over the needle and pinch it so that there's no air in there and pretend it's folded paper with a real sharp crease. Then I push that sharp crease right through that hole, pull it through. Now I look and try to find in the same color, it's a little harder to do, but I'm going to find a V right there that needs to have a stitch below it. Well, there's one there too. Is that one? No, I think that's the stitch below. Either one's going to look fine. I'm going to go right here and go under it. And that makes that V sit inside of another stitch. And now this stitch only has one side of the V, so we're going to finish that V by going into it. And there you go. Again, this is Lynn Hirschberger, Lynn H., from ColorJoy.com. Thank you for joining me.